my last pregnancy update video was quite a while ago. Um, I think it was like eight at eight weeks. I was eight weeks pregnant. And I just want y'all to know that my mental state is so much better now. I have had more time to appreciate this blessing and I am a Christian and the Bible talks about how you should not isolate yourself and we're in isolation right now right with this virus going on we're all isolated and so even isolation like forced isolation doesn't do good for your mental status but on another note the isolation that I was doing in the beginning part of my pregnancy was my husband and I were kind of keeping it to ourselves and so at 10 weeks I had my first doctor's appointment and I shared the news with my mom my dad my sister my nieces and then my husband shared it with some of his closest friends I also shared it with some of my closest friends too and I made sure that I like video conferenced with the closest people um, to me so I could see their reactions. From that point on, after we shared it with like the initial people that we shared it with, we had so, such an outpouring of love and support and encouragement and you know my uncle he talked to my husband and shared just some personal things with him and it was just like it made us feel so much better about the situation. But now I am currently 26 weeks pregnant and so I'm coming up on like the end of my second trimester and uh, like so many people know now I did announce it on Instagram and I haven't shared too much about my pregnancy on YouTube but I, you know I've shared a few pictures here and there did the gender reveal and all of that on Instagram. It's a girl. It's a girl? How do you know? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're having a girl. <laughs> so you're gonna be an awesome big brother to little sister. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm just so excited. So my plan was to like at least give monthly updates. That didn't happen. I've been so busy, y'all. Like, I am a school teacher. I have nothing, like, no real information, nothing set in stone about what is going to take place this school year. So that's been something I'm trying not to stress out about. Honestly, I do not want to go into the building, like, whatsoever. I don't want to see people. I don't want to be in anyone's, like, I don't, I just don't want to be around people. I have been stuck in the house and I'm comfortable with that because I just, there's, I just don't want anything to go wrong with myself or my baby or my son or, you know, of course not my husband, but he's kind of been going out and, you know, doing the runs for us and all that stuff. But I've been staying home and I don't want to affect any of this isolation I've been doing by going and being around other people. So I can share my thoughts, I guess, in another video. Um, as far as how I'm feeling being pregnant and a teacher and school starting soon and all that stuff I think I'll go ahead and do that in another video I also have like some story times that I want to share about what's been happening with my pregnancy and I just feel like this video is going to be extremely long already and I kind of want to be able to like share the whole entire thing without boring some of you in this video. But I don't know, you clicked on the video, so you probably wanna hear about stuff since you clicked on it. But I, I was writing down in my phone like what was happening week by week and just to kinda of like look back and see all the things that were happening is kinda of crazy because it's so much different now. Looking at the first, I guess, month after that, I did notice like hot flashes, sweating. I wasn't able to eat that much. I did have acne to show up and people like compliment me on my skin often. And so I have not experienced like real acne throughout my life. Thankfully, I didn't have to go through that like teenage spell of like bumps all over the place. But I do get a pimple here and there like when I'm getting my period or when I'm on my period. But I definitely started to see more acne and still like it's it's not as dramatic as it could be you know but for me it's just different so I'll get like just 
a pimple, a large pimple, and then it'll go away in a couple of days. Um, or I'll get a few bumps here and there, but it'll go away. But it's something new for me. I had my first doctor's appointment after the video, which was a mess. Um, not gonna lie, it was very, very emotional. That's one thing that has been really emotional was doctor's visits until recently. I'm so thankful. Started off with an ob and then I went to a midwife. And now I'm at a new midwife that I love, love, love so much. I've gone to her a couple of times now. Um, and I have another visit this week with her. And I'm so thankful for, like, I'm so thankful that I found her. She's much closer. I had MJ at a birth center and I had him in the water, it was a water birth, and so I'm planning on doing the same thing with this baby because I loved that experience. The one that I went to initially was like 45 minutes away, up to an hour with traffic, because Houston traffic is horrible. So the one that I am now going to is just about 20 minutes from my house, so very close, and just the whole environment is different, and I'm really thankful that I found her. I had a lot of cravings over like at the beginning. I don't know if I have cravings now, but I know I've craved like boudin, um, like spicy boudin with spicy crackers. People tell, you know, people say pregnant people shouldn't eat spicy foods. I've eaten spicy foods all my life. I mean, I ate spicy foods with MJ when I was pregnant with him. When I was nursing him, I ate spicy foods. I've still been eating spicy foods this pregnancy and like, it's, I've been fine. So everybody's different. So what kind of annoys me though is like when people are like, oh, you can't do that because you're pregnant. Like that really bothers me. It also bothers me when people say you shouldn't do this with your child or do whatever. Like my child is my child. And you know, I am okay if people share what they've done with their child, but to try to tell me what I should do with my body or with my child, we've crossed the line. So I do eat spicy foods all the time. So let's just get that get that straight sour things oh my goodness sour patch kids have been amazing during this pregnancy pickles oranges chocolate oh chocolate like I've always loved chocolate but y'all this pregnancy chocolate has been so amazing like I've been like looking for chocolate like going through drawers and cabinets and stuff just trying to figure out if like some chocolate slipped through the cracks and I missed it or something. I've had candy that like students gave me throughout the year that was chocolate candy that I hadn't eaten and I have already eaten all of that up. So chocolate, oh man, it's been amazing. My appetite has been up and down throughout this pregnancy. Like there were times where like I would feel like I was hungry but then I would like literally go from my room into the kitchen and attempt to like maybe get some chips or something and by the time I reach and grab the bag I no longer want the chips anymore and so then I'm like okay I don't want that and then I'll just go back to my room and not eat anything so that's been weird because like I can eat before I was pregnant and then like to have times where I didn't want to eat that was just weird around like 12 months 12 months lord around 12 weeks so like three months of pregnancy I started having the dreams and I hate dreaming. To me, dreams don't mean anything. That's my beliefs. It's just a dream. Um, but my dreams are so real that I just don't like dreaming them. So even if it's a happy dream, I don't know that I'm dreaming until I wake up. And so if something happy is going on in my dream and then I wake up from it, I'm sad because I no longer am in that moment, you know? And then if it's like a really bad dream, then it's horrible because I wake up like sweating and gasping for air and like it just feels so real that I really prefer not to have dreams and that's something that I've been having. Um, it's just dreams, so I hate that. I am 34 and so I'm like a year before they consider me being an at-risk pregnancy and so my previous ob -gen that I had just during pregnancy. She was trying to push for me to have a lot of the testing done and all the extra things that you would get when you're at risk, like when you're 35 and older. And so that really bothered me because she would always say, well, you know, if you were pregnant next year, you would 
have to take you would be required to take all of these tests so you might as well go ahead and get it done because you're very close to being at risk so you want to just be safe and get all this stuff done and not be like but I'm not I'm not 35 so I'm not understanding why you're trying to push me to do all this stuff so because of that like every time I've gone into or every time I went into the doctor's office I was always really like stressed or like it just wasn't a, a, a nice place to be because I just felt like they were always trying to either do this extra test and force it on me or just making me feel like you're so old like oh my goodness you're pregnant I remember one time I went it was like in the morning and I had just eaten and so when she checked my stomach with the Doppler isn't that what it's called Doppler radar Doppler heartbeat thing she was checking for the baby's heartbeat and it was making this really weird noise and I knew it wasn't the heartbeat and so I'm laying there trying to figure out what that noise is and I'm I could tell like my face looked really concerned and she was like oh yeah that's not your heartbeat and so I'm like is everything okay and she was like yeah it's fine and she's just trying to figure out where the heartbeat was and all that and she wasn't getting a heartbeat and I was like I mean is, is everything okay and huh, I was so stressed she was like yeah the noises you hear are just your she was like maybe you're hungry and I was like no I just ate and she said oh, okay well your food is digesting then that's what you hear and she was like, the baby's heartbeat has to be somewhere. She was like, let me push your, your bowel out the way. Let me push this out the way. So she was using the little Doppler to push my insides out of the way because I guess the baby was hiding behind them. Now, I, was, I was really panicked. And so she finally was able to let us both hear the heartbeat, which made me feel so thankful. You know, finally she was like, oh, there it goes. And so I was like, okay, great. When she said my heartbeat was 160, I was like, ah! because you know I've heard that if um the heartbeat is is over like I think 139 or 140 or something then you're more likely to have a girl and so even though it wasn't confirmed at that time when she told me that it was 160 I just knew to myself that I was having a little girl when I was like 15 weeks pregnant I had to go clear out my room because we didn't do that at the end of the school year and that was difficult um I hadn't told anyone at work that I was expecting and so I wore a really big shirt because I was kind of showing at that time and no one questioned anything at all. I have been so emotional this pregnancy. Like I cry a lot, but I've been crying a whole lot. Like even with with silly things, like my husband, he like offered to fix me some, I made chicken and dumplings and he offered to warm me up some. So he warmed it up and he's like, what do you want, a spoon or a fork? And I was like, a spoon. And so then like he's like what kind of spoon I'm like can you please just give me a spoon and I know he's a jokester so I was like I don't want like a big spoon I just want a regular like a regular size small spoon like I just want a small spoon he like went in to the kitchen and like removed the measuring spoon like the little tiny like fourth of a teaspoon spoon thing and like came and brought that to me and I started crying like hysterically. I was like, I just wanted a spoon and this is not funny and I'm hungry. And like, he's looking at me like, oh my goodness, because ordinarily I would have laughed or be like, really, you're just gonna bring me this spoon? Like, you know, it was it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. But in that instant, I was hungry, I really wanted to eat, and I didn't feel like him playing with me and bringing me that little tiny spoon. So he just like, I mean, he like literally backed up like, Whoa, like that that went wrong real fast. I've had Braxton Hicks a few times. Like now that I'm six months, they I've gotten a little bit more of them, but nothing too bad. When I was 18 weeks, I was very, very stressed out one day and I do not like taking medicines and um so that's why I I would like prefer going to a birth center instead of going to a hospital just because, you know, I just prefer to not go in there already knowing that somebody might try to force me to do an epidural or like at a birth center the doula is there they kind of encourage you to follow the same plan that you want instead of being like oh it's hurting too bad okay we can do an epidural like they were like no no, no you're doing awesome and all of that so I don't like taking medicines but this one day I had the worst headache and I was kind of feeling very emotional because of things that have happened in my past with you know very close people and um 
you know, things can start and go really, really wrong really fast with headaches. And so this day I had never experienced a headache like this. And I mean, it was just in this one spot. It was, it was horrible. I tried different things. I tried cold packs, heating pad, pads, um, packs. I tried like laying on different, laying in different areas. I tried massage. I think I took like a warm um, bath. I took a long shower. I, there were so many different things that I tried that day, but I had never in my life had a headache like this. And I didn't want to go to the doctor, so I didn't. I was like, okay, it's it hurt all day long. And I was like, if it's hurting tomorrow, then I'll go ahead and go to the doctor. Um, I went to sleep, but actually, I, th I don't even think I, no, 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 I couldn't go to sleep. So finally, it was probably like, I don't know, like two, two or three o'clock in the morning. And we didn't have any medicine here that I could take. Like, Tylenol is okay when you're pregnant, but I think I might have had to leave or Advil or something. And so I had my husband to go to the store and get some Tylenol. And so he went to get the Tylenol. And so I took that just so that I could be able to go to sleep. And so I did go to my doctor the next day and she was like, there's been a lot of testing done. And the reason why Tylenol is okay is because it doesn't pass through the uterus, is that what she says? It doesn't pass through something, through the cervix. Okay, whatever, it doesn't get to the baby. So that's why they say it's safe. And so she was like using things like Tylenol is kind of like, it helps you see like if the issue doesn't go away with Tylenol, then that means that it's something that you should be more concerned about, but it went away. I was able to get sleep. I ended up going to the dentist just for a checkup, you know, just for a cleaning. And I ended up having a cavity that the dentist said was a really bad cavity. And if I wasn't pregnant, she would probably do a root canal, but they just did a filling on it and I felt so much better. So that is why I had the headache. It was a cavity that wasn't even bothering me, but I guess that's how it was bothering me as a headache. I guess after 18 weeks, I was like, girl, you ain't making no video. And I just stopped taking notes. So now I am 26 weeks, which is crazy. I have um, the pregnancy app that I've been using. It's called Pregnancy Plus. And every Saturday is when my weeks start. And so every Saturday morning, my child, MJ, he comes in and he's like, can I look at the app? Can I look at the app? And so he always loves reading about his little sister and seeing what she's doing that week. So. He's always very, very excited. And so he was like, hey, your third trimester starts on the 27th. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, so that's next week. And I was like, what? And it didn't hit me like that I'm like about to be my third trimester, which is so crazy, y'all. Like this pregnancy, I've been really, really busy. And so it's just kind of going by. Much busier with already having a child. When I had MJ, I did work, but I wasn't a full-time teacher. I was a teacher's aide at that time. So the work wasn't as stressful as it has been during this pregnancy. And I've been teaching summer school online this entire time. I'm thankful that this week is my last week. And then I'll have like two weeks off, I think. And then I go, I'm supposed to go back to work on August 14th. Um, but my principal was just asking me to come up there this week to get my room together. Well, not really get my room together, just move stuff. And so I'm like, oh, that, that's, let's see how that works. Anyways, one thing that I want to say is that the thing that's been the hardest for me is not being around people during this pregnancy. Um, I'm thankful that I have a son and a husband who I'm able to be with all the time. My mom stayed with us. For a couple of weeks so I had contact with her but everyone else has been like through video conferencing or like waving like stopping by people's houses and like standing in their driveway or you know at the end of their sidewalk and having conversations with them with the mask on and so it's just not the same so I'm really trying to stay healthy and keep everyone healthy and so I'm in Houston which is one of the hot spots so I'm really 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 trying to stay really cautious and all of that but it, it has been really hard and another thing that's been difficult is going to um, doctor's visits without my family because that's hard I'm gonna share that with y'all in another video about like how it's been going to the doctor 
um, during a pandemic. But what's been happening recently? I've been getting short of breath a lot. I really try to stay healthy and continue working out during this pregnancy, but I just don't have the drive to. And I think it's because I get up early to start work and then by the afternoon I'm hungry and then I just want to go to sleep. I need to just really do it this week because I know that working out, exercising is really helpful when you are planning to have your baby naturally. It does really help you to be like in shape and stretching out and working those muscles and everything. So I need to pick that back up. Even doing my hair has been difficult. So I definitely struggle with doing my hair standing up, but even when I sit down, I'm just like, ugh. I just get so out of breath and sleep has been horrible. I have had a couple of instances where I have had a crick in my neck because this child is laying sideways at the moment. So her head is over here and her, leg, her feet are on this side. So they say it's best if you sleep on your left side, but I usually like sleeping on my stomach or shifting to other sides because my body kind of gets stiff when I sleep in the same position all the time. So that presents a problem because if I lay on my left side and I'm not in the perfect spot, I'm laying on her feet. And so this child will start like wiggling as if I'm like, you know, like I don't know like if it's too much so she'll wiggle so I have to make sure I like turn a little bit where I'm not like on her feet so then if I try to lay on my right side I don't know if it causes her to like feel like she's going upside down or maybe I touch her head or something but then she starts like kicking dramatically as if you know I'm doing some kind of harm to her so she's just dramatic I don't know where she gets that from but she's dramatic I have had to on occasion sleep and I remember doing this with MJ. I would sleep like this, but it was closer to like eight or nine months. But I'll have to like put pillows behind me and put pillows underneath my legs and sleep kind of like on an incline and elevate it. So I have been getting the nursery together. Um, it, it's been a struggle because I have a lot of stuff in there from work that I've been trying to clear out and i um, trying to get the furniture and all that stuff in there so that's taken me a little bit longer than I've been wanting it to but I think it's just because I'm just tired after work so I'm just gonna blame it all on being tired after work so this is the first summer that I have worked summer school I don't think I'll ever do it again because um, I need my breaks so that's just the truth so the extra income is nice especially because I have a little one on the way but I don't know if it's worth my sanity because when work starts for me, um, I don't know if I'm going to be rested enough and the people are not going to want to deal with me. But anyways, um, let me do a belly shot and then that will be it because I know y'all want to see the belly and I want to show you the belly because nobody's been seeing the belly because video conferencing is like from here up. And so here goes the belly before the belly. Don't tell me I need to be bigger. Don't. I don't need you telling me I should be bigger than I am because I am six and a half months, but I am not that big of a person in the first place. So you can tell I'm pregnant, but I might not be as big as you were or as your mama or your cousin or your sister or your auntie or whatever. So every belly is different and every belly is amazing and my baby's fine. All right. So here goes my belly. Um, I do have an undershirt, so I'll go ahead and show you there. So there we go. This is what a 26-week belly looks like for me. And if I turn around, you can't tell I'm pregnant from behind. See? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. But there we go. So I just wanted to come say hi. If you have any questions, any requests that you would like for me to do during this pregnancy, I have a few months left. So hopefully I get myself together and get them out for y'all. But I would love to hear from y'all. So be sure to ask me questions down below and I will try to answer them for y'all. I will talk to y'all soon. Thank y'all so much for watching.